David Page told us that that Hold the Line opening piano part was much older than Toto's debut album. He'd been uh, playing with it for quite a few years. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Where did you come up with the, like, Hold the Line, that intro, how old was that by the time you, that's, we, we heard that song? Was it old? Did you always tinker with that? How go far back does it go? I had that in, uh, when I was around 20 or 21, I just moved out of my parents' house and because uh, I was going to school, see? So I got my first apartment and my first little upright piano in my apartment. And that's the riff I started playing. So this is, a, this is around, we're talking about 73, 74. I may have had that riff, you know? And uh, I started playing it, playing it, and then started writing a little song about it. And uh, it turned up uh, at a total, uh, when we first brought Bobby Kimball in, we, we were trying to get, figure out how to, who's going to be singing a song like that, you know? And he sang the shit out of it, you know what I mean? So uh, it was really great uh, uh uh, marriage and chemistry on that song to have our band playing because they, they they play so good on it you know yeah that uh, I, I love this story with glenn fry talks about uh, uh jackson brown with doctor my eyes he kept oh, yeah. he, he was working on that and the the eagle special he was just keep working kept working on that and he says were you were you ever in that situation where your neighbors would go that guy i've heard that riff so because you gotta work on stuff sometimes you know you go it's not quite right and Oh, definitely. I no, I played the I played the hold the line riff so long that people were pounding on my doors like to stop playing and stuff like that. I almost got evicted from my apartment because of, of playing that riff. I think for three days before I showed it to the band. You know, um, Melanie photograph. That's an album I bought because of the cover. I knew who Melanie was. I knew she was at uh, Woodstock. I looked at that cover and I remember going, "I want to buy this uh, uh, album, Cyclone." is one of my favorite songs from that era. What was it like working with her? She's a great, very great talent. I love folk artists. You know what I mean? I love folk rock and stuff. And uh, she was this shy little girl that had, uh, you know, these songs and everything. And it was fun just to try and uh, uh, interpret her songs the way she wanted them, you know? And I haven't listened to that so album in a long time. I need to pull that out again. And give it a listen because I haven't heard it in years. But it's I got a great. chance to use Jim Jim Gordon, of course, on drums, and Dean Parks on guitar, and uh, I think David Hungate may have played bass for me on that. But that's when I started producing records with my dad, and uh, that was a fun experience. Uh, again, everything was uh, uh, a, a lot of fun and a lot of inventive, creative souls uh, participating in a lot of those that music, you know. Yeah, she's a real, very iconic uh, girl that was uh, really uh, had her own sound. You know what I mean? Her own sound and uh, uh, brought the Edwin Hawkins singers in on that one big song. She had the gospel choir on, you know, um, but uh, she was great. There's a timber in a voice. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. that's uh, right. You know, when I talk to people, a lot of times they'll say things like, well, my father didn't get it. My uh, uh, my father was like John Helliwell of Supertramp the other day. He says, oh, my God, uh, they went to see uh, John Helliwell's parents went to see him in concert. And he came up to the sound guy or the producer or whoever it was and said, I shall never do that again. That like to I'm going, oh, my God. But it, <laughs> he was just wired differently. And to him, it was all yeah. uh, classical music. Oh, you, sure. you were with a guy who could touch a whole bunch of different things. But you spent like, that's like the most, it's, it's not only quality time with your dad, but it's also quality time in the music industry history. That's right. That's like, oh right. And, so, and it's so, because all the, my dad was so respected that he knew everybody uh, from a musician standpoint. And uh, so I got to watch like the mamas and the papas make records with Hal, Bl Hal Blaine and Joe Osborne and Larry Nectel, the, the, the best rhythm section I ever heard at that time, you know. That was my my favorite wrecking crew guys uh, were those three guys doing the Johnny Rivers records, the Mamas and the Papas records, uh, Fifth Dimension records, you know, all those kind of things. And uh, uh, just can't say enough, you know. 
Forgotten Toys is the brand new EP from David Page. It's a long time coming. He spent his whole life working with a whole bunch of musicians. We'll have links to the Toto website where you can pick it up in the description. Make sure you like our video. Keep in mind the entire first interview is online right now. We'll have a link to it. And keep looking back for links to the brand new interview in its entirety. We'll be having that up in the next couple of weeks. And there'll be a link in the description. Subscribe to our channel, share our videos, and comment. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself. Thank you.